Yeah, my name's Josie, again. Um, I'm going to present my research project. So we're looking into whether hearing impaired individuals will tolerate different output delay lengths to normal hearing individuals. So just to explain a bit about what we mean by output delay lengths, um, I'm sure you've all probably heard of digital signal processing, or DSP. Um, it's where we use mathematical algorithms to try and improve sound quality to hearing aid listeners. Um, one of the problems with this is that these algorithms do take time, and so that applies a delay to the signal before it's played to the listener. Um, currently, these are below 10 milliseconds in hearing aids, but with advances in the algorithms and possible additional algorithms, um, this delay may actually increase. Um, this could cause a problem because delay can cause disturbance, and it can have three effects on the listener. So the first that can arise is the comb filtering effect. And this happens at delays of around 20 to 25 milliseconds. Um, so what happens here is there's sort of peaks and troughs in the sound signal, and they occur when um, delayed and undelayed sounds mix. Um, and this changes the timbre of, to the listener. So longer delays, we start to have echo effects and problems with visual asynchrony. So that's when the listener starts to have problems with lip reading and that sort of thing. So why might there be a difference between normal hearing and hearing impaired people and their delay tolerance? Well, when someone has cochlear deafness, their ability to detect small temporal changes in the sound signals is reduced. Um, so they're less able to detect this um, temporal fine structure, so this green wiggly line here, and instead they rely more on the slow moving envelope, which is the blue line there. So it's reasonable then to assume that perhaps they may be less likely to notice very small delays in sound. So this is a plot of, of the previous literature. What I've done here is I've plotted the intolerable delays. So that's the point at which a delay becomes too annoying to listen to. Um, we've got the crosses represent studies using normal hearing individuals and the circles represent those with um, hearing impaired individuals. Um, there's quite a range there, we're going from about 10 to 40 milliseconds, and that's mainly because of differences in the experimental setup. So for a lot of the normal hearing studies, they used hearing loss simulations or hearing aid simulations, and so that made a difference to the results. Um, with the hearing impaired studies, most of them used just a very specific type of loss, and so we're not able to really generalise to the rest of the hearing aid population. Um, some studies have tried to compare normal hearing and hearing impaired already, and they have suggested there may be a difference, um, but they've tended to use preference of two delay settings, so there's actually a 50% chance that the listener has guessed the shortest delay. Um, so the gaps in the research then. We need to know more about the delay tolerance of hearing impaired individuals. No one's yet looked into the long-term acclimatisation to delay. So you all know when we give someone hearing aids and we first provide them with amplification, we expect them to probably not like it very much at first and get used to it over time. And so it seems reasonable that perhaps um, this should be able to happen with delay as well. And we also wanted to use a, a larger range of delays than previous studies. So we had two hypotheses. The first was that hearing impaired listeners would tolerate longer delays than normal hearing listeners. The second was that experienced hearing aid users would tolerate longer delays than new or non-hearing aid users, and that was to try and look into the long-term acclimatisation effects roundabout. So we had 20 normal hearing and 20 hearing impaired participants. Of the hearing impaired, 10 were experienced hearing aid users and 10 weren't. We had repeated measures designed, so um, all participants went through all conditions, and this was randomised using Latin squares. We had three stimuli. We had own voice, experimenter voice, and an experimenter voice involving a level difference. So this level difference is trying to simulate a hearing aid in some way. Um, when you hear through a hearing aid, you've got um, air conduction sound going straight through the hearing aid and also through the gaps and vents in the mould. And this um, sound coming through the gaps and vents in the mould is actually attenuated slightly. So what we've done is we tried to simulate that attenuation. And we used subjective measures of both annoyance and naturalness, and that was using rating scales um, on a scale of 1 to 7. And we used five delay lengths between 10 and 50 milliseconds. So this is an example of a participant. Um, we've got a real-time setup, so the speaker speaks into the microphone, it goes straight through the DSP board where the delay is added, and then it's played straight to the listener. Um, for hearing impaired participants, we also provided amplification and we used the half gain rule for that. Um, 
This setup did actually cause us some issues. You can see the microphone is on a stand there. Um, we, it was very difficult to control how close each participant was to the microphone, so there was some variation in that. Um, and particularly when they had a long delay, people tended to try and move away from it. Um, so that's quite a large threat to our internal validity. But on to the results. Um, so for our first hypothesis, that's a normal hearing versus hearing impaired. This is the results plotted for the experimental voice conditions. We've got delay running along the bottom and annoyance ratings along the side. The bottom line, the blue line, that's the hearing impaired participants and the top shows the normal hearing. So you can see, first of all, there's definitely increased annoyance with increased delay. And that there's quite a difference between the two. So normal hearing individuals were more annoyed by the delay than the hearing impaired. Um, these two square points on the side here, they're from practice trials which involve no delay, um, just to try and see if there was any baseline annoyance. And it just does show some baseline annoyance before delay was introduced. Um, when we did statistical analysis on this, we found a significant effect of the presence of a hearing loss on delay tolerance, and so we were able to reject the first null hypothesis. We also wanted to be able to compare our results to previous studies, and like I mentioned before, they reported intolerable delay lengths um, when they got too annoying. Um, and in the past, they actually worked that out by a rating of four, so a medial rating. So we decided to do the same for comparison, and we did that using a line of best fit. Obviously, a line of best fit comes with it, its problems. It doesn't necessarily represent all of the data well. Um, and in any case, these graphs are based on average data. And there's quite a bit of controversy in the literature about whether you can actually use average data for a Likert scale, which is what we used. So we do need to have caution with the results. So the next hypothesis was about the hearing aid use. Um, again, we've got delay on the bottom and the annoyance rating along the top. Um, the green line shows the regular hearing aid users and the purple non or new hearing aid users. So this shows, particularly in the longer delays, a, a difference between the two, um, with the non-hearing aid users being more annoyed by the delays, which is what we expected. Um, although it's not a lar as larger as the last one, and statistical analysis showed that this wasn't significant. Um, that could be due to the sample size. I mean, in this case, we had 10 non-users and 10 regular users, so Perhaps if we had a few more, we might have found a larger effect. And then another thing um, that we looked into was the effect of the degree of hearing loss. So this table here shows the different categories of hearing loss that we included, um, and their intolerable rating, so that's the rating of four for each of the stimuli. Um, a few things I wanted to point out from this. First of all, this mild hearing loss actually showed less tolerance to normal hearing individuals. And that's not what we expected. We expected that um, as hearing loss got worse, their tolerance would be better. Um, we only had three people in the mild category, so that could be why. And again, the same sort of thing with the moderate category. Um, they were actually less tolerant to delays than the mild to moderate. Um, but all of the outliers were in the moderate category, so it could be that that's what's caused it. Um, but as we did expect, the moderate to severe, and that's the most severe losses we had, um, showed the most tolerance to delay and, in fact, didn't reach intolerable levels for two of the stimuli. And that's all the way up to 50 milliseconds. Um, so, to conclude, we found that hearing-impaired individuals tolerated much longer delays um, than the normal hearing, and this was found to be significant. Hearing loss degree may affect it. Um, it wasn't found to be significant in analysis, um, but it's shown some sort of effect, possibly. Um, and also an effect of long-term acclimatisation. Again, not significant, um, and we need to look more into this. Um, but certainly our results suggest that there's room to extend hearing aid delay, um, which would allow for more or better algorithms, um, which could result in better sound quality for the listeners. And that's my project. <laughs>
Um, yeah, I've got something. Yeah, so that was quite interesting, actually, between the normal hearing and hearing impaired. Um, when it was the level difference condition, as opposed to the other ones, we actually didn't find a difference, so they're very similar. Um, and because something that we were trying to look at was whether the recent studies are actually representing the hearing impaired population well, this may suggest, and it's only a may, um, may suggest that perhaps when we're using hearing aid simulations for normal hearing people, it may be representative of the hearing impaired population. But this definitely needs to be looked into more. Change. Yeah. So Ben just asked about taking the practice ratings into account. Is that right? Yeah. Um, we didn't actually know. Um, we had them there. I thought about doing that, um, but because it was the practice trial, they actually hadn't done any ratings before that. I didn't want to count them as official ratings, so it was more sort of looking at it out of interest because I didn't think I could take them as official. Well, I, I was thinking that aren't you somehow trying to simulate their hearing? How, how do you take account of um, somebody's somebody's way of hearing? Is that are you, are you taking that into account? Yeah, this was so that was the level difference condition. Um, it was really just simulating the presence of a hearing aid in the ear rather than actually the hearing aid technology. So it was just taking into account the level difference because of the hearing aid being there. Um, so we didn't go as far as actually simulating a hearing aid, which would have taken quite a lot of engineering on Tobias's side, I think. Yeah, just to Gareth's point, I, it's just that if there's, some, if there's some annoyance that's just to do with the fact that you're, you're, you're not listening actually to your own voice, you're listening to your voice God that's gone into yeah. the uh, sound yeah. card and come out again. Mm. So if that was different to start with, then that might bias it. Look at those straight lines, they might end up more or less hitting um, at the origin the same point. So, so I was just wondering whether that would be a possible mm. confounding variable. Yeah. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Any further questions? Yes. These are just subjective measures were annoyance and naturalness of the sound. Um, what's the difference between those two ratings? Okay. Um, I didn't I don't have a slide on that one. Oh, sorry. So that was about whether there's a difference between the naturalness and annoyance ratings. Um, we, we found that they were actually very, very similar. We did a correlation analysis on them, and it was, I think it was 0.98, the Pearson's row, so pretty much exactly the same. So when we're looking at the overall results, we were mainly just looking at the annoyance because it technically represents both of them. Yeah, we did. So that was about whether we looked at open or closed fit in hearing aids. Um, yes, we did. We recorded whether they're open fit or closed. Um, we did an analysis on whether that made it as well, um, and it didn't have any effect on the delay. So I left that out of the presentation. <laughs> but yeah, we did, we did look at that as well. I think that probably would have made a difference if we were using open fit and closed fit simulations, whereas our simulation was kind of universal. So I think then it made less of a difference to the results. Well, you think that they adapt or acclimatize more if they had open fit because they, they're exposed to that delay a lot more? Yeah. Well, the previous studies have shown that with open fits, um, the disturbance may arise sooner. Yeah. So, yeah. 
but we didn't find that with this one, but I don't know why. <laughs>